system in control. The suppression water system is now armed. Pre-liftoff water will be released at T-minus 16 seconds. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. The hydrogen burn igniters have been armed. They'll burn off any residual hydrogen gas under the main engines. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. The external tank heaters on the ET to orbiter structural attachments have been turned off. Orbiter computers have, uh, and we have gone for auto sequence start. T minus 26 seconds, 25. T minus 21 seconds, the SRB nozzle gimbal profile underway. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, we have a go for main engine start, 7, 6, we have main engine start, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. So over to Mission Control in Houston. The next voice you hear will be the Mission Controller from Houston. Standing by, four engines to throttle down. All three engines will be throttled back to 65% performance as the vehicle passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Three engines now at 55%. Velocity now 1,000 feet per second. Atlantic, two miles downrange. Two miles downrange and all that cloud cover not being affecting the cameras today as we get a pretty good view, not as good as the last flight, but certainly a good Engine's view of Atlantis streaking into space. 104 percent performance. Atlantis velocity now 1,500 feet per second. Atlantis, go with throttle up. Standing by for a separation from the SRBs. Velocity now 2,000 feet per second. Altitude 10 nautical miles. Downrange distance 8 nautical miles. SRBs, the solid rocket boosters which will fall away and later be recovered after they fall into the ocean. It may not this be is clear mission enough control. today to All see ABUs it exactly. Looking good. Three engines at 104%. is on her back as she rolls and turns off the pad and goes for orbit, waiting for those solid rocket boosters to disengage. There they go, falling off away just above those two great Roman candles, as we so often call them, falling away. They'll be recovered on Earth. There was the trouble on Challenger, but it's gone like clockwork today. A mission that may well mark the beginning of what could well be a golden age of planetary exploration by the U.S. This is really entering into the 1990s with Magellan. This is Mission Control. This is Mission Control. That call uh, lets the crew know that the SRBs and engines are pro providing the uh, expected thrust. Very big mission. They'll no sooner get into orbit, they'll launch the Magellan Space Probe, which will make its long, begin to make its long 15-month journey Atlantis, to Venus. Down at Cape Canaveral, Mortine, it looks great. It was an absolutely uh, beautiful launch, Peter, and uh, scary till the last minute. We really didn't know whether it would be launched because of the weather conditions, which were bad all night and all morning and all early afternoon long. Well, you fooled us. And now Control have gone over to Houston, where ABC's Jim Slade is as well. Jim, they're going to the second closest planet to the sun with that space probe. Give us a brief profile of the mission. This will be the 21st time humans have sent a probe to Venus. The idea is to learn why Venus evolved so differently from the Earth. 
The Earth and Venus are almost twins in terms of composition and size and distance from the Sun, yet you have these different conditions, including a massive greenhouse effect over the planet that makes it an inferno on the surface. Does that hold a warning for Earth? That's something Magellan will try to find out. Peter? Okay, Jim, thanks very much. Linda Godwin is with you, our resident astronaut for the day. Linda, this must be very exciting for you. Yes, that was a great launch. Linda, you've had something yes. to do with putting the Magellan mission together. Can you give us a sense uh, of, uh, of what they're going to do and how long it's going to take them? Um, the crew, once they get on orbit, of course, it's going to begin in, together with the ground stations, checking out the IUS, the upper stage vehicle, and the Magellan spacecraft and making sure it's a healthy spacecraft. And when they get a go for launch, the crew is going to be deploying that uh, from the payload bay on about orbit five is our first opportunity. And uh, at some point after that, uh, the IUS upper stage will fire two different uh, motors and send the Magellan spacecraft on its way to Venus, which, of course, is, uh, I guess we spoke before, is going to take about 14 or 15 month journey to get okay. to Venus. Okay, Linda, thanks very much. And then, of course, they're going to take about eight months mapping the surface of Venus and sending all of that telemetry back to Earth. They will do more Atlantis in this. ATO, select Banjul. We're waiting for main engine shutoff now. That's mission control. The ATO call stands for press on to abort uh, to orbit, uh, should that become necessary. Currently all of engines performing at 104 percent. Atlantis velocity now 10,400 feet per second. Downrange distance. What mission control is now saying is of course if they have to abort at this moment they could actually abort into orbit itself. There'll be no more requirement at this point of the mission for them to return to Earth on the other side of the Atlantic or land anywhere in North or West Africa. This is Mission Control. This is Mission Control. That call means that uh, Atlantis could press on to main engine cutoff. Velocity now 1,200 feet per second. Correction, 12,000. Speaking of main engines, let's go back to launch site itself at Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center, and watch this wonderfully familiar sight of power in the making. All right, all right. All right. For those people who see it from the Cape, it never dulls for a second. It is that enormous roar comes sweeping across the landscape. I think the all right, all right we heard was from ABC's Mort Dean, who was down there as well. And here it is again. The nation and the world watching so much more closely since Challenger and so much greater care being taken in NASA, which is why last week when there was a leak in a fuel pump in the cooling process for the main engines with only 31 seconds left in the countdown, they stopped the count automatically. Today they launched about an hour late with only about five minutes left in the window in which they could launch today, but it was not Atlantis equipment today which worried them. It was the window and the weather Call which gave them concern. Atlantis Mission Control. That Atlantis can press to orbit on one engine at 104%. All three engines are performing at 104%. While mission control Atlantis is going on there, perhaps we can show you here in the studio exactly what the Magellan looks like. About six hours after they get into orbit, they will open the cargo bay doors in the shuttle and they will very, very gently put this out into orbit itself. Those great things which cause a reflection at home now are the solar panels which will stay in that position all those 15 months long to Venus. The Magellan mission so named for the Portuguese navigator who was the first man ever to circumnavigate the globe. Talk about history. His mission began in 1519 with five ships. And of course it was Magellan's voyage which proved the world was round and revealed that America was a new world. Now they're about to have the capability to get, in fact they already have the capability to get into orbit with only one engine. Velocity now 2300 feet per second, downrange distance 699 nautical miles at an altitude of 59 nautical miles. Down at Mission Control, Jim Slade again. Jim, how complicated a mission is it and how complicated a piece of machinery is this Magellan? 
Magellan is made up of a lot of spare parts, Peter, but it is an extremely complicated machine capable of doing some amazing things. It uses the same kind of technology for looking through clouds that are used by, by spy satellites, uh, you might say. It also makes that antenna, which on top of the model you showed was very, very small, appear to be several miles wide, which gives them a much greater reach through those clouds. That's called synthetic aperture, and uh, they're playing a lot of tricks to get an awful lot of data back from Venus, and uh, by the time they finish, they'll have about 500,000 books worth. <laughs> okay, as I said, look, thanks, Jim. They are now successfully in orbit. They've had main engine cutoff. They are in orbit, and in about six hours from now, they will Atlantis, take those cargo doors, they will open them, they will let Magellan go ever so gently out and into orbit, and then on its own rocket here, which I'm afraid is attached to something here, they will give it this great propulsion which will send it first with one burn and then with a second burn on this long 15 month <laughs> journey to the gravity gravitational pull around Venus itself and then these panels will open and they will begin to send back this enormous mass of data which as Jim Slade will tell us what happened to Venus why is it such a noxious place and are there any lessons on Venus for us here on Earth